MIT says nuclear fusion is only 15 years away. Nuclear fusion could just be around the corner. Researchers at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology working with a newly formed private company say they will build a working fusion power plant in 15 years thanks to a new superconducting material that recently became commercially available. The material is a new superconducting steel tape coated with a yttrium barium copper oxide. The team, working with MIT spin-off Commonwealth Fusion Systems, plans to use the tape to make smaller, more powerful magnets that can be used in fusion reactors. The new magnets will double the magnetic field of a fusion reactor, which means more power can be produced with a smaller device. The smaller size will reduce costs and complexity, making future fusion power plants easier to construct. Limitless clean energy? But what about beautiful clean coal? Worried about climate change? These projects will give you hope. The ITER nuclear fusion project is 50% complete. More clean energy than needed by all of humanity? Uh, yes please. Construction on the International Thermonuclear Experimental Reactor in southern France has reached the important halfway milestone. Fusion energy looks to replicate the same process that powers the sun by converting hydrogen atoms into helium through a process that occurs at extreme temperatures. The reactor will have to be able to sustain temperatures 150 million degrees Celsius, 10 times hotter than the sun's core. The massive donut-shaped Tagamak reactor will be surrounded by giant magnets that take superheated plasma away from the metal walls of the container. This requires the magnets to be cooled to negative 269 degrees Celsius. The ITER is aimed at using hydrogen fusion to create heat energy that can drive turbines to produce electricity. Forest Green Rovers really live up to their name. An eco-friendly English soccer club has announced plans to build the world's first all-wooden stadium. Forest Green Rovers Eco Park Stadium will be built almost entirely of fire-retardant treated wood. This type of wood chars, but does not oxidize when burned, and therefore significantly slows the spread of fire. The stadium's roof will be covered by a transparent membrane that reduces shadows on the pitch and helps the grass on the field to grow. The non-league Forest Green Rovers play in English football's fifth tier. The club has made various efforts to go green, including installing solar panels at its existing stadium using a solar-powered lawnmower, and in 2015, they even stopped serving meat to their players. Chicago hopes to build floating solar-powered bike path. Mayor Rahm Emanuel is hoping to build a floating bike path along the Chicago River in an effort to make the city the most bike-friendly city in the U.S. The bike path would be built on steel reinforced concrete pontoons, which are secured with pilings driven into the riverbed. Each 82 foot by 12 foot segment would be equipped with a solar panel. More segments can be connected to extend the bike path. Energy generated from the solar panels will be used to power lighting fixtures. The path is also embedded with a heating conduit to prevent icing on the surface during cold weather. It also has retractable awnings that can roll out to provide shelter for riders when it's raining or snowing. The proposed bike path would float on the Chicago River between Horner and Ping Tom Parks. It would be free of cars, allowing cyclists to ride on it any time of the day. Each mile of the bike path might cost between five to $10 million. Architecture firm Second Shore, which put forward the idea, hopes to build a half mile stretch of the proposed bike path in a pilot project by the summer of 2017. Indoor vertical farm near New York City uses less water and produces more. The world's largest indoor vertical farm is well on its way to producing millions of pounds of food a year while using less water. Last December, Aero Farms Incorporated secured $20 million of venture funding, paving the way for its 70,000 square foot facility in Newark, New Jersey. Now, the company is on track to produce 2 million pounds of food a year. The facility houses an efficient aeroponic vertical farm system that uses 95% less water than conventional commercial field farms and 40% less than hydroponic farms. The farms use no sunlight or soil Instead, the plants are housed on shelves and sprout out of a cloth medium made of post-consumer recycled plastic. Each cloth takes 24 plastic water bottles out of the waste stream. 
An aeroponic system mists the plant's roots with water, nutrients, and oxygen. The closed system allows the farm to use less water. An LED lighting system is programmed to create a specific light recipe for each plant. This gives the greens the exact spectrum, intensity, and frequency they need for photosynthesis in the most energy efficient way possible. The programmed lights allow farmers to control the size, shape, texture, color, flavor, and nutrition of the foods produced. The cloth medium separates the plants from the nutrient-rich mists, allowing for fresh, clean, and dry produce to be harvested. Once harvested, the cloth medium can be fully sanitized and reused on new crops. By using the aeroponic and LED systems, farmers can monitor plant growth and tweak and track changes to allow for further improvements to the system. The AeroFarm system is also customizable. The company hopes to build farms in different sizes and configurations to grow food in varied locations with the most efficient yield per square foot, no matter the space. AeroFarms aims to have 25 facilities around the world in five years. The company's farms can each rotate among 22 varieties of crops a year.